Hey folks, this video is brought to you by RivianStories.com. Please join us there to get the latest Rivian news, pics, and videos from Rivian owners and fans. We also have t-shirts, hats, and gear guides for your next adventure. Also, if you want to listen to the full episode of today's video segment, just search for Rivian Stories in your favorite podcast app. Lastly, please do like and subscribe. It actually does make a huge difference and helps us keep creating content. Uh, thanks for joining. So we have a handful of things to talk about today, and I'll go ahead and put them on the show notes if you want to look ahead and skip ahead if you're on YouTube or the podcast. And so, by the way, if you're tuning into this from the YouTube crowd, realize that you can listen to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Google or any kind of that stuff. We're, we're doing the actual podcast thing again, and uh, vice versa. If you're on the podcast, check us out on YouTube. So the first thing I would love to talk about, guys, is just an overview of the delivery process for Rivian. Jimmy, you have gone through the complete process beginning to end. I'll kick us off with the first thing. Uh, you have a configurator, uh, you have the ability to go in there and make changes. And one of the first things that can happen that can clue you into that you're getting close is if you can't update that configuration. <laughs> so some people in the Rivian community check their configurator 18 times a day to see if it's still quote unlocked. And if it's locked, it might, it means that you're getting close. Jimmy, did, did you first discover yours being locked? Remind me of how that went down. So I discovered um, mine being locked because I had uh, my morning email check when I wake up to see what, what hit the inbox. And I had an email stating that my configuration had been updated, mm -hmm. but I did not change my <laughs> configuration. Um, turns out once I was as close as I was, they were pulling camp kitchens off of, off of configurations because they weren't deliverable yet. And they didn't want to have any, uh, do outs or I, you know, they didn't want to have any IOUs for any of the merchandise or accessories. And then that's when I noticed that my configuration was locked and in order to make any additional changes. To okay. contact your guide. What are our insights on what that means on the back end for Rivian as far as a locked configuration? Because you can still make changes, but it's just going to be through your guide, correct? Right. Yeah, you can still make changes. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm jumping way ahead here, but, you know, I, I think one thing that we, the three of us, has talk, have talked about in the past is uh, with this batch building. I mean, they built, they have built hundreds of. Um, and I mean, technically thousands at this point, I mean, low thousands, but they built thousands of trucks and, uh, you know, they had probably done enough work behind the scenes to match me with a vehicle. You know, when they locked my configuration, they had, they already had in mind that there was a, a glacier white launch edition, black mountain interior, all one T on twenties with the off road package, um, in the standard twenties at that. Um, basically everything that matched my configuration for a truck to be built as far as accessories, those can get thrown on whenever, but there, there was a, tr they had a truck in mind for me mm -hmm. at that point in time. And that's good. Cause it leads to the next thing. And Scott, you can jump in with any other insights you have that would like help, <clears throat> help the overall audience pre-order community about what's going on behind the scenes. Not even that, but just like the timing of it all and what it all actually means. Because after you lock in your configuration, the next thing is you're going to get a PBA. Um, preliminary buyer's agreement, right? A, a purchase agreement. You're going to sign that and then you're going to go on to the infamous eight steps. Any, um, what we can talk about, we don't have to go through all those eight steps. Maybe we'll put up a screenshot of what happens uh, through those eight steps. And that's mainly figuring out things like insurance and payment and all that kind of stuff. Um, but any kind of other insight you want to give into the PBA and the eight step process that would be helpful? Well, I was just going to say a couple of things about PBAs because we've seen it go a little bit differently from person to person. Some PBAs may come when there is a vehicle in production that matches your configuration where the vehicle's still at the plant before it even ships out to your local service center. We've seen other PBAs come that is obviously after the the vehicle has arrived at the local service center because then almost immediately thereafter once the service center has done the pre-delivery inspection 
that's when the VIN gets assigned and it opens up the actual eight step purchasing process. And so we've seen different periods of time between PBA and when the eight step purchasing process starts. Super helpful. Yeah. Very true. So the, you're not going to get the eight steps until you have your VIN after the inspection at the delivery center, they know that it's arrived where it needs to without any major damage. Although sometimes we've seen some damage then even after the eight steps, like, um, come through and they have to kind of uh, reloop back around. Right. Uh, but that's not been the norm. The norm is that once you get that eight steps, right. you're getting pretty close. And the good news for that is the eight steps is pretty easy. It's all done on your phone. Uh, it's very well integrated with, with tech as far as snapping pictures of insurance documents and all that kind of stuff to where it's, um, it doesn't really take too long. Right. Jimmy, how long does it take you to get through the eight steps? The game that took a little longer simply because I was uh, not in the same state as Nikki when we did ours. So, you know, trying to get some of that, trying to get some of that documentation took a little longer just because um, of the distance between and it was in the middle of the workday and I was in a hurry to get it all knocked down. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely, you know, I think I stated this uh, two episodes ago when I was talking about the eight steps, but it's definitely something like you stated, Kyle, you're going to want to do on your phone because they've made it so easy to do with uh, integrated take pic, you know, the take picture button on your, on your phone or upload from your gallery. If you've already, if you've already jumped the gun and, um, you know, taken pictures of, the front and back of your driver's license, your insurance card. Well, insurance card plays in later because they actually want to have your VIN on it for your truck or your, or your R1S. Um, the, they want uh, pictures of the license plate that you're moving over if you are doing that. Um, if you are trading on a car, they want the work they, um, they need like your seven or 10 day payoff. Um, they want uh, the registration for the vehicle that you are moving the plate from. Um, there's a whole slew of things that you're going to end up, up uh, uploading into the eight steps. And from your phone, it's, it makes the whole process so seamless. Um, I just, I would recommend being in the same room, if not uh, preferably the same state, if not the same room <laughs> as your wife, if you are. Yeah. But I mean, what we're getting at is we're talking several hours for the eight steps, not several days. It's just a matter of locating documents. Oh, yeah. sure. I mean, right. I mean, they, they kind of give you an idea of how long, like in the eight steps, they kind of give you an idea of how mm -hmm. long each step takes. Um, and, and for me, I mean, the longest step might, the longest step might have been the mm -hmm. trade in, um, cause we did trade in a car. So you've got to wait for the appraiser, mm -hmm. so to speak, to look through and, you know, get, get comparables for a 2017 yeah, Chevy Bolt. Yeah, that was super fast. Figure out if, I mean, I remember them saying like... Uh, yeah, it was, it, it was in about yeah. two hours um, that it took for them to come yeah. back to us. And that was the longest I mean, I way think to that wait. that's fast. I don't know. Um, it's like... That's real. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, compared yeah. to... Yeah, compared to some of the other steps are like five minutes, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're taking pictures of the front and back right. of your driver's license. That's cake. Um, you just got to make sure you take a clean photo. And I was so excited. I was, I was probably <laughs> shaking and, you know, my, the, the first couple of photos I took were, were yeah. hot garbage. What happens, uh, right after the eight <laughs> steps are complete? So, well, the eight, so your eight step, is not going to be complete until, well, depending on your delivery, um, date, if they are booked far enough out, um, that eight step will unlock until from what I've seen, at least the week before your delivery, because they don't go so far out because there are, there are, uh, I'm assuming they're because of the different variables and the what if scenarios that could happen. Um, they don't want to get so far ahead that then they create a bottleneck. So they go, they only go like a week and a half mm -hmm. at a time. Don't expect to schedule something two or three weeks ahead. Yeah. Like it's not going to be. That's yeah, because what I was getting at is this eight step eight is directly 
um, tied into the actual delivery date. Go ahead, Skylar. You you got it. That's what that's where I was gonna go. Is that step mm -hmm. eight is scheduling your delivery. Mm hmm. Yep. Mm hmm. Yep. And you'll see on step eight, you'll see that until the day, until the day of delivery, you'll see April fourth at you know five p.m. Mm -hmm. in our instance um, yeah. for delivery. So that entire time, your R1 will either will be at the delivery center that's closest to you, and mm -hmm. you're going to have a few options, really two options to get it. Either you're going to pick it up from the delivery center, or it's going to come to you. It's going to come to you either on a rollback or it's going to be driven. Let's talk about some of those variables, what we've kind of found out just by testimonials of deliveries and whatnot. So first of all, if you pick up from the delivery center, that's somewhat self-explanatory. Um, you're either going to drive your trade in there or whatever, and you're going to pick it up from there. Um, what What's the uh, big deciding factor? I know this, but I'm going to ask, what's the big deciding factor between someone driving your R1 to your house versus it coming on a rollback? Distance mm -hmm. from from the delivery center. Yeah. And I've heard a couple different figures. I've heard 60 miles and I've also heard 15 miles. So I don't know which one is official policy, but yeah, it, it's absolutely based on distance to the lo the local delivery center. Mm -hmm. Close yeah. to the delivery center. Jimmy, you took obviously delivery at your house, as we all know by now, but do we want to kind of say anything as far as the process? I would imagine it's somewhat similar between the delivery center and at your house, house, as far as like the papers that need to be signed or whatnot. One question might be, which one should I do? Like some people would be willing to travel to the delivery center versus at home. Do you guys have any insights as far as the pros and cons of where to take delivery? I know for us, we wanted to get the truck with as little opportunity for damage mm -hmm. as possible um, because we had a really good idea that you, we were going to PPF the truck, whether that was a full a full driver's kit where it's the f entire front clip and A-pillars and mirrors, or it was going to be a full wrap. We hadn't really decided which one at that point, um, but I wanted as minimum uh, drive time on the road as possible. I mean, granted, they, they're facing into the road, and our truck did have some bug guts smashed on the hood in the grill when um, when we took delivery, which is fine. Mm -hmm. No complaints. Um, but you know, Florida roads, any roads, you're you're especially driving, you're bound to to catch a rock or something at some point. It's just a, it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. And for us, we wanted to ensure that we were going to have the cleanest truck going to the mm -hmm. detailers as possible. Um, yeah. But some people like driving it. Yeah, some people like driving it right away, you know, and and they have no intention of wrapping it. And you know, we've we've ha we've got some people in RS that did you know three hour three mm -hmm. hour pickups. Um, yep. So. Yeah, so much less of a chance of any kind of rock when it's going to be up on a rollback behind a truck in front of it, you know, up off the ground, bug guts, but mm -hmm. much less chance of like a pebble bouncing right. along the road that's going to get way up there, um, for sure. I know that like for me, just to kind of chime in, Skylar, you can say anything else comes to your mind, but my delivery center is attached to the factory, <laughs> you know, on the back side of it, to where if I go there, like some people have been getting tours, um, and it's obviously a much bigger like experience as far as like traveling to the promised land like the homeland of Rivian so that's appealing to me and so some of it will depend on like if there's an experience like that around uh your neck of the woods uh versus not and then like Jimmy said huge as far as getting it wrapped um I would have to drive 60 miles back and if I was going to get wrapped then you know Illinois roads uh, Florida roads have nothing on Illinois roads. Skylar, can you think of anything else uh, here as far as like pros and cons or what you're planning on doing? So I think the home delivery option is awesome. Right now, for me living in Central Texas, I know that the, the, the nearest delivery center is up in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And 
if it helped me get my vehicle days or a week sooner, I would absolutely go up to Dallas and I would drive it back myself and I'd be more than happy to do that. The other interesting thing about the Dallas facility is that it is a temporary facility and because it's not on brand for Rivian, they're not even allowing pickups at the facility. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a great point. I think that the home delivery thing, I'll be honest, because all my neighbors still ask me every week. I think they've quit asking me, actually. They're tired of asking me when you get near a Rivian. Um, the home delivery thing could be cool, like depending on the time of day, if neighbors were home, I'm sure they'd come out and be there. That has its own bit of uh, of a special feel, but I think that with my case, I'm definitely going to try and go up there if I can. I I'd love to take my family up there too. Hopefully that would work out. Getting back to the delivery day, whether you're going to take delivery at a service center or at home, it's getting your vehicle, getting the necessary paperwork done there. Jimmy, take us through in Skylar 2, the biggest things you're signing there and how much time to expect that to take, especially if you don't have a surprise entourage from Florida and El or from Texas and <laughs> Illinois. Um, what, what's the timing like there uh, as far as like a typical yeah. experience for people to plan on? I mean, it was, it was pretty quick. I mean, there was some documents that you signed, actual wet signatures if i recall right and then there was a couple documents that were digital signatures on an ipad mm -hmm. um it might have taken right. 10 minutes if that and that was simply because once i was done i handed nikki the ipad and then she handed the ipad mm -hmm. to aaron or i i signed the papers and i and then i handed the pen to nikki i mean that was yeah we spent more time signing <laughs> media releases than i think we actually did you know between the between the four of us yeah um because the bulk of the time, yeah. I think that they would have a lot of it is actually whether you want to get a little bit of a tour from your delivery guy or gal, whether you want like a little quick start, whether you want the full thing, um, the amount of time you're going to inspect the vehicle, they do leave time for that. Or if you want right. a touchless, contactless delivery, that is also an option. I, I will say with regards to the amount of signatures I know that I saw Jimmy sign one vehicle related document and also had to sign a notary book because mm -hmm. the delivery specialists are notaries so that everything will be official and legal. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, there might've been one more actual wet signature that you had to do outside of the notary book and one document that I saw, but the paperwork side of it really can be done very quickly. Yeah, I think it might have been a uh, the tag, the tag transfer was I think that that mm -hmm. last document. I mean, it was it was too simple. I mean, and again, I'm not that guy. I, you tell me to sign something if I know I'm going to be buying a truck or a house, I'm just going to sign it. I, yeah. I don't read it. I'm ready to. I'm ready to move in the house. I'm ready to buy the day. <laughs> I've got a special contract for you next time I see you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, getting yeah. into more of what many people want to know as far as like useful information for delivery of. Do you have any tips for? Can we give any tips of things to look for? And I'll actually just come out and say that we have a delivery checklist at RivianStories.com. Head on over there because it's just a list of kind of known issues that we've seen that you might want to look for. And we don't have to like, let's not review all that. Let's just say go to RivianStories.com, look at the delivery checklist because there's some things that you just want to peek at yep. that we've been keeping tabs on that are known issues and things from like panel gaps to, to whatever. But beyond that, Jimmy, was there anything that you're like, go ahead and take the time to get your delivery specialist to walk you through that. And I guess what I'm getting at is they help you set up a profile, right? I mean, if you're going to do a contactless delivery, those are things you would have to do right. yourself. And I know Nick kind of had a little mm -hmm. bit of a blip and that was because of something, but take it away as far as like, if you're going to spend five or 10 minutes, what would you, what would you spend it on? Yeah. So uh, that instance that you're talking about is both of the phone keys ended up mm -hmm. coming to me. Um, so I had to delete, I had to delete that second phone key and then invite Nikki mm -hmm. as a driver, um, which then gave her access to having the phone as a key. 
Um, since there is only one key fob, there are two key cards and one uh, wristband, which um, we did not get a delivery and we are still actually waiting on. I would definitely recommend, at a minimum, I would recommend having your guide or the field specialist, excuse me, walk you through mm -hmm. setting up those profiles because I'm not, it's not that the, the setup isn't intuitive. It is actually is very intuitive. Um, but I know for me, I'm going to get, I'm, I'm going to get so far out ahead of everything else that I'm going to forget about mm -hmm. doing those little things. And it was nice to just to have somebody kind of mm -hmm. rein me in, um, and, and keep me grounded versus, um, flying off the handle and, and right. jumping ahead yeah. of steps. Uh, Skylar, do you have anything else that you want to throw in there as far as like tips when you have access to that delivery specialist? I'd say watch out if there's a delivery specialist that's doing nothing but filming. <laughs> yeah. Especially <laughs> with, uh, yeah. definitely be careful uh, if so Rivian so Joe is there. <laughs> Yeah, I would agree, so um, Jimmy, that if so I was going to get anything, it's like, yeah, let's just set up the profiles and get all of the computer in set up. And for sure, if you've yet to drive, go ahead and get that tour of you know, it's, it's intuitive, but get that tour right. as far as selecting your drive modes and putting it into drive and putting it in a park and what it looks like to have the hold and all that kind of stuff just to make sure that you're comfortable driving out of there. And right. I know that obviously we saw your truck go in reverse off the rollback and pull into your driveway. So we knew that, uh, you know, it's obviously working. Do some people take a quick five minute test drive with their delivery specialist or what are we hearing uh, about that kind of stuff right now? Charles Kim mm -hmm. did. I mean, that was, that was probably the first delivery that we got to watch. And that was, he, he live streamed that mm -hmm. for us on Instagram. Let me say this too. It, seven days, thousand miles. You know, I mean, if you want to, if you want to drive the vehicle, drive the vehicle. If you're not 100% uh, sold on it, um, definitely don't do what Nikki and I did. I mean, we knew right away mm -hmm. we were going to get the truck no matter what. Um, but I wouldn't – don't take the truck to the detail shop and have it there for 10 days um, because your window will come and go and you drove it. Yeah, that's a great once, point, Jimmy. Essentially, by the time, yeah, by the time we took it there. Yeah, seven days you know, so, or 1,000 miles to restate that, right? Yep. Right. Yep. I mean, take take the time to open up all the doors and try all the buttons and and mm -hmm. drive the truck at speed at slow yep. speeds. Um, yep, because we've heard yeah alignment. alignment. Was getting you know, I, yep. I was like, we've heard like ahead. maybe a report or two. Yeah. Like, oh, mine's kind of pulling the right to a little bit, so I got that. Yep. Right. Yep. I mean, you kind of had a few things in for like service requests right away. They bundled a couple in. They're bundling in some more. And so you're already on that train and we'll maybe cover yep. service later. Cause I already saw a post today about service on YouTube and we won't get too much into that right now, but, uh, obviously from the get go, um, you're able to get some things going. So that's good. And you'll get some more things going soon mm -hmm. as far as corrections and whatnot. So all in all though, when I think about just, you know, we spend a lot of time trying to go into every nook and cranny and corner of the delivery process. And when you compare it to like the last car I bought from a dealer, there's good dealers, there's bad, there's everyone in between, but I think it's a neat process. I mean, I think it's super convenient. It's streamlined for brand new company doing this. I think it's gone pretty well. Obviously there's a lot to correct and make better, but um, I think it's, they thought through it pretty well mm -hmm. from what I can tell. And large majority of delivery experiences that we've heard about have been overwhelmingly positive. And then Jimmy, I mean, once you have it, my, you know, don't have to say goodbye to it for two weeks. That's the biggest reason I don't want to get protection done, <laughs> but can you just give us like an overall, you, you took it in, you got protection, you did the whole thing. We're, we're going to talk about that later. Subscribe and tune in because we're actually having a specialist for PPF and ceramic coating coming onto the show next week. We're just going to interview and get the pros and cons of all of the above. So I don't want to get into that a ton, but you've got it back and now you've been driving it. Can you just give us the high points of what it's been like? What's been the experience now that you're driving the R1T? Give us the update. All right, folks, that's it for this one. Again, catch the entire episode on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app. 
Until the next video, we'll be hanging out at rivianstories.com, so we hope to see you there.